and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today we're gonna talk about 10 things that are surprisingly unsustainable. Things that we might think are sustainable that turns out not to be and generally things that have a higher impact than you would perhaps expect. It's been a long time since I've made one of these listicle videos so uh, I'm excited, let's just get started. Number one thing that has a surprisingly high impact that we probably don't talk enough about and I know for a fact we don't talk enough about it on this channel so perhaps this is a shared experience but house plans. Some of us, myself included, have normalized or idealized this idea of having a lot of house plants and we love how it looks in our homes and it's amazing. Getting some green in there, it just feels really nice. But how many of these house plants are actually grown and produced comes with quite the impact. Most of us, I guess, go to a store and buy an already big plant and a plant that's already grown quite a lot and usually these plants are not native to the area in which they're sold they are imported from other places and usually they're actually also grown in greenhouses that run on fossil fuels so it comes with quite the impact and then we can also talk about in terms of trash that many of these plants come in plastic pots that are in many places completely unrecyclable but the plastic pot is the smallest impact when we look at the plants because the growing of the plant, the transportation of the plant actually accounts for a whole lot more of the impact. But there is of course alternatives to this. It becomes much more sustainable if you propagate plants yourself, if you buy them yourself from seed or from sapling. If you also choose native plants to have in your home that also automatically becomes more sustainable because chances are they won't have to be grown in greenhouses that run on fossil fuels. So more local vegetation but also propagating and growing your own own plants from small seeds or saplings is honestly way more sustainable and not very hard or difficult to do either. You can also regrow different seeds from vegetables like bell peppers, or avocado and so many other things and use those in your house instead. The next thing is something that we do I guess often with good intentions but it actually ends up being detrimental to the entire process and that's wish cycling. If you haven't ever heard about wish cycling before, it's basically when you throw something in with recycling because you really want it to be recycled or you wish that it would be recycled. However, the reality is that not everything is and whatever or whatever is not recyclable actually depends a lot on the local facility that manages the waste. So some places glass recycling might not be available and some places organic recycling might not be available. So we throw things in or like we sort things as a recyclable material because we would really love it to be so, but we actually end up hurting the entire recycling process whenever we do this. One example I can think of that I know know I've done myself and when I was sort of confronted with the fact that this is actually bad obviously I stopped but I've always really wanted pizza boxes to be recycled because that cardboard cardboard recycling is available to me but locally in Denmark where I live I, you can't recycle a pizza box if it has grease stains on it if there's any food on the cardboard it cannot be recycled and it has to go out with general waste and putting food stained cardboard in with the clean cardboard recycling batch will ruin the entire thing so even though there's a good intention they're like I hope it can be recycled we'll actually end up doing more harm than good and there are many other examples of this so my number one tip always is find out what is recyclable near you and stick to those guidelines always what I do now if I do have a pizza box is that I cut out all the grease stains and then you can compost those and then the clean cardboard I recycle <laughs> now number three a thing that is surprisingly unsustainable is gum it contains up to 20% plastic and cannot biodegrade, will not break down, which is why we see gum on trees or sidewalks basically everywhere and it will stay there forever. The natural components used in traditional old style chewing gum has been over time replaced with synthetic alternatives because they're easier to produce and cheaper to produce as well. But that also means that now gum contains petrochemical components. So if you spit out your gum on the street or just toss it, it's not going anywhere. There are more sustainable gum alternatives out there that are completely free of synthetic components. Let it be known. Now, number four, I need to have it on this list and I recently made an impact video just about this topic as well, but grass, grass. 
And when I say grass, I'm specifically talking about lawns. Lawns have a huge impact. They consume so much water, they take up so much space, and it's just a dead zone for biodiversity because nothing thrives in a monoculture like grass on a lawn. If you want to know more about the impact of lawns, check out the impact video, but just let it be known, the more sustainable alternative is growing a garden, using native vegetation, having a mixed lawn filled with some grass and some moss and other types of greenery and not having it just be one thing. And especially not in areas if you need to artificially water it and it just can't do with the rainwater. Number five, funnily enough, also something I've talked about recently on this channel, but returning items you bought online. This is of course not an issue that is destined to happen with all things you buy online, but a majority of items that is bought from fast fashion shops and then returned or Amazon, a lot of it ends up being thrown away to landfill. This happens a lot in the fashion industry, but there's also been several accounts of electronics bought on Amazon and then returned just being discarded and thrown away. From the company's perspective, it is more resource consuming and time consuming to relabel something and repackage it and then send it out again and just throwing it away to landfill. So obviously not buying more than we need is always a good idea. Of course there is an issue of having to see if this thing looks good on your body but for that I definitely recommend knowing your measurements completely and then using the size chart. That definitely does help quite a lot. Okay, all right, number six is fabric softener. I don't know if you use fabric softener, I haven't done this in ages because I'm really sensitive to perfumes on my skin, so I haven't used it in ages. But the thing with fabric softener is that it's usually very scented. There's usually a lot of synthetic components in it that makes it good for different colors, or it makes it just, you know, scented and lots of perfumes and all of this stuff we flush straight out into our water systems where all of these synthetic components bioaccumulate and react with each other and that's really bad for water quality it's really bad for all kind of aquatic life and biodiversity another thing i've seen with fabric softeners is that they have set the standard as to what is clean we now associate very scented laundry with cleanliness whereas laundry that smells of nothing we associate with dirtiness and it should arguably be the other way around. If you want more softness in your laundry there are definitely other things you can do like you can for instance use vinegar or more natural alternatives but fabric softeners it's just it's time we say goodbye yo we need to break up and it's not me it's you. Now I don't know if anyone thought this was a sustainable thing but it sure is surprising and that has to do with your smartphone battery and charging it overnight. I've seen a lot of debate as to what is sustainable or not or if charging your phone overnight is dangerous for the phone or for you etc and it seems like that's not the case however it does require energy to charge your phone even when it gets to 100% because then every time your phone gets to 99% it will use energy to spark that 1% up again up until 100 so leaving your phone to charge overnight will actually waste a bit of energy which is surprising. I don't know if it's surprising, but now you know. Another really important thing about batteries and charges that I would like to add here is that it's not a good idea to let your phone go to 0% power, ever, really. Smartphones run on lithium batteries and uh, those bad boys are not kidding. Actually, it's a really unsustainable material. Batteries in general have a lot of development to do in terms of sustainability. But one of the things we as consumers can do is make sure that our lithium batteries live for as long as possible. And letting your phone get to 0% will actually wear out the lithium battery faster than if you start charging it again around 20 to 30% power. Similarly, actually getting your phone to 100% will also wear out the battery. So having it around 80 to 90% and beginning to charge it again around 20%. If you're constantly in that space you will get the most out of your battery and I thought that was pretty exciting. Now number eight is organic waste, non-composted. 
organic waste, food waste, or other types of organic components that we then throw away. Specifically, throwing organic waste into landfill has such a huge impact because they won't break down in landfill. It can take years for a single carrot to break down because what happens in landfills is that you have your trash and then you dump more trash on top of it and that means that no air can get into the trash below or out. And that makes the environment <laughs> not ideal. That makes the entire landfill emit methane, which is a greenhouse gas that is significantly more potent than CO2, about 25 times more potent actually than CO2. Generally, the entire thing about landfills is bad, so we can add that to the list, but I don't think anyone finds that specifically surprising. Number nine is single-use cotton products. We are talking disposable cotton pads or different kinds of beauty essentials, self-care essentials that's based on cotton. Those are quite impactful and they are quite impactful because growing cotton requires a lot of water and a lot of land and it also uses a lot of pesticides. And when we use it to make clothing, it's also not ideal. Okay. But using all those resources to make something that we can only use once and then we throw it away, actually disposable cotton products has a higher impact per kilo than disposable plastic products because it requires so much more resources. So it's a really good idea to opt for those reusable products that we can wash and use over and over again. The impact of those products is much smaller because we can use the thing several times. And lastly, and this is honestly a really big pet peeve of mine and it's something I've seen tons of and I think we're going to see even more of it in the future with greenwashing and the development of bio plastic green plastic but a really big pet peeve of mine is when a 50 50 combination of green plastic bioplastic and petrochemical fossil plastic is used to make disposable materials honestly when it's used to make anything but specifically I've seen it made into plastic bags I've seen it made into straws and cutlery disposable things all kinds of disposable things that would normally just have been 100% petrochemical plastic and now it is this 50-50 combination, it is not always 50, sometimes it's like 20-80, but the combination of these two types of plastic makes it completely unrecyclable. And even though plastic is bad, 100% petrochemical plastic is recyclable, or at least a lot of it is. Still lots of work to be done there, let's be honest. But making it a combination of more types of materials makes it completely, completely unrecyclable because we can't take them apart again. And it's such a big pet peeve of mine because I see tons of companies and brands using these disposable products and opting for them because they have a greener look and then they can say that they're doing a green thing and it's a green initiative when actually it's only making things worse. Okay, there's also an impact video about bioplastic in general if you're interested in some of the more technical things about how it's made, why it's made, the pros and the cons, better than plastic, blah, blah, blah. And with that being said, that was the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any sustainability pet peeves or if there's anything that you find surprisingly unsustainable, realizations that you have done, leave them down below in the comments and share, let me know. And I guess I'll make another one of these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.